Thanks for joining us today for the tour of the Marine Renewable Energy Laboratory. As you can see, we're not going to be touring the Mechanical Engineering Building today, but rather we're going to be going down to South Campus, where Harris Hydraulics Laboratory is located. I'm Brian Pelagi. I'm an Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering and the lead for the lab, and I'll be your narrator on the tour today. So Harris is one of the older buildings on campus. It's got a lot of character to it and a lot of really new and exciting work going on today. Okay, so Harris Hydraulics Laboratory is one of the oldest buildings on campus. Uh, it's gone through a lot of changes uh, since it was constructed in, I believe, 1920. Um, this space uh, was, an, was the oldest part of the building, it used as a teaching laboratory for years. It's now being renovated by the College of Engineering to expand the teaching space on the second floor to completely cover this area. So that's what all the construction is going on here. But once it's done, this will be one large continuous space for ocean engineering and marine energy research at Harris Hydraulics. So for the time being, we are using some of the other spaces that haven't been renovated yet as uh, staging areas for our field equipment. So over here, we have all of our drifting acoustic instrumentation systems, the daisies, which are used to measure underwater sound from marine energy converters. Jess Noe did most of the design of these systems. But this has been a, uh, a four-year project to modernize how we take underwater sound measurements and uh, really making good progress and getting good data in the field for the first time. So that's all gone well. I think we're using the space pretty effectively now. Obviously, if you, don't, if you look too closely at the walls, uh, it starts to look uh, a little less like a workshop and a little bit more like what my students refer to as enhanced interrogation space. Um, but. Uh, Definitely space is at a premium on campus, so it's good to work with the space we have. So this whole, this whole space used to be undergraduate uh, experimental space. So there used to be uh, a large tank on the far end there, a small flume on this side, a giant pump. All of that's been removed with the move to move all of the educational activities to the second floor space. And so this space is in the process of being renovated to have the floors worked on. You can see that uh, there's to say the floor is uneven would be a, uh, <laughs> a bit of an understatement. And there's a, there's a pit down there. We, we joke the sump monster lives in there. Uh, no one's actually laid eyes on it in years. Hi. Hi. This is Kate, uh, and this is uh, the turbine Harvey, um, which Kate works with quite a bit, um, and is also a bit of a problem child. If memory was just problems, never, we would never forget Harvey. And one of the challenges is it's a really, it's a really delicate set of measurements. It's a, really, it's a really complicated and elegant system that's taken a lot of time to, and a lot of effort on Kate's part to get to really work reliably and well. But um, yeah, a lot of cool work with blade shape and, uh, and blade geometry and blade structure now going on. So over here is the microfloat uh, area. This is Trevor Harrison, is a senior PhD student in the lab and has been working on an underwater sensor and it's specifically a swarm of underwater sensors uh, to try to characterize marine environment. We track them uh, acoustically uh, from the surface. And one of the difficulties in doing very shallow water testing is that the control depends on the pressure difference between the air and where the float is. So right now that difference is quite small. And so my float is uh, trying to react to those small changes. Okay, so this is the this is the old side of the building. This is the, the kind of the big continuous lab space that's under construction. Uh, and hopefully should be, this is all gonna get a, a pretty significant facelift uh, in the next 12 months. So come back in 12 months, see us again. Uh, and now we're kind of moving over to the, the new side of the building, which was constructed in the mid sixties and has the, the major uh, fluid mechanics facilities. So. So not all of this is active right now, uh, but we have, a, we have a small machine shop, which allows people working down here to not have to go back and forth to the rest of campus. So we've got some basic tools in here, which is helpful for any students that are trying to work down in the flume and work on their experimental facilities. So uh, this is the experimental high bay in Harris. Uh, this is uh, where most of the large scale fluid mechanics equipment on campus has been uh, aggregated. And so there are four flumes. There's a flume experiment on the far side, which is trying to represent flow in a river into the ocean. There's a flume for measuring sediment motion. There's the Alice C. Tyler flume, which is our high speed water channel and where we do most of our turbine research. 
And then there's Wasser, the Washington Air Sea Interaction Research Facility. And that's a new combined wind wave current flume that came out of NASA's Wallops Island facility. So let's take a walk down. Everything that you can see here that is not blue was rebuilt by uh, students in my lab uh, a couple of years ago with support from the Alice C. Tyler Trust. So a lot of this facility is brand new. And we have, this is our test section where we do turbine research. And then down underneath, you can see a number of cameras. And this table here is designed to hold uh, a laser. And so this, this laser camera combination is used for particle image velocimetry, which is how we visualize flow fields in and around the turbine. And so we've got one turbine test rig in the flume and another test rig up there that's a prototype rig that's coming together now. So if we proceed back along here, so this is our wave tank on the left, which will start being used for undergraduate research uh, and graduate research pretty soon. To generate waves, this paddle moves back and forth. And as it does, it generates waves that propagate down the whole length of the flume. So a lot of interesting old things down here. You don't see spiral staircases like this in a lot of facilities anymore. but which are there because someone did not do that and ended up laying themselves out on the floor. So uh, we're doing some electronics work in this room, uh, but also this is a shared lab space with civil engineering, the applied physics lab and mechanical engineering. So my students are using this as electronics prototyping space. And then Curtis Roosh has used this for uh, visualizing the performance of heat plates in a tank. And so uh, he'll be able to show off a little bit of uh, visualization here. So, This tank is designed to be able to test uh, small scale heave plates, um, recording the force that it takes to um, move them up and down in the water column. And that's to be able to better understand how wave energy converters with uh, subsurface heave plates operate. So Sue, there is one problem with me being on brand. This mask uh, does a great job of fogging my glasses over when I talk. Oh. 